Um, hello, everyone. I'm Ata, and uh, I'm part of PrimeDAO, which is a collective of organizations and ecosystem builders focused on uh, building a groundwork for cultural and infrastructural uh, tooling for uh, DAOs and DAO to DAO interactions. And today I want to talk about ecosystemic value and how it might be a super important aspect of collectively cultivating a regenerative finance uh, ecosystem. And we can start with kind of defining um, what is an ecosystem. Uh, I'm just forking a dictionary definition here, but we can see that it is a community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. So when we adapt this understanding to crypto, we can see it's like a blockchain that makes up the possibility of a decentralized network and the protocols that define kind of the action space in that network. Then there are organizations that we call DAOs who kind of build and govern these protocols. And then we have uh, members that uh, have ownership over these DAOs and contribute to these DAOs. Once we see kind of this raw sketch, we can easily notice that the protocols are uh, already interconnected and there is kind of a Web3 term for it. It's called DeFi Legos which kind of alludes to the uh, interoperable nature of the protocols in a permissionless network where any protocol can tap into one another's potential and uh, leverage it to build a new service on top of it. And by this composable, utilizing this composability, in a way, increases uh, what we can do uh, in the blockchain. And we see that also the members are fluid as well. They can kind of hold ownership over multiple organizations. They can be contributing to uh, multiple organizations at the same time. But uh, a noticeable aspect is that the DAOs, that the organizations that sit in between the community and the protocols um, are not super connected with each other. They are not communicating with each other. And uh, we can make the thesis that like, protocol level interdependency and the fluid community has yet, to itself, has yet to reflect itself in interactions between DAOs. Um, is the problem? Clearly not. The blockchain space is still like, thriving. But um, it can enable us to kind of imagine a scenario where all the network participants can come together and unite their forces towards nourishing an ecosystem that they want to see and, in a way, tap into the indigenous power of the network that they have. And this is important to kind of uh, provide an alternative to a recurring pattern that we see in the blockchains, which is kind of reliance on traditional institutions that provide the much-needed capital, liquidity, and network, and broader resources to these organizations. This can be in the form of kind of OG whales that have uh, overweight uh, voting power and capital across key protocols or uh, VCs that kind of have their own logic of operation and provide uh, these resources for an uh, expectation that they have. And uh, so this decoupling will become really important, especially for regenerative finance. Uh, projects that are focused on kind of empowering um, communities and uh, building protocols that have uh, ecology impact focus. And they have kind of uh, unique challenges in the sense of kind of uh, first determining this logic of value and role of profits in um, organizations like DAOs that don't have any chartered purpose, like traditional public corporations where the purpose, the, defining the purpose and mission of the DAO is much more uh, open to how the community wants to see. However, the community, in a way, reflects its will in the voting uh, decisions and its influence over the builders behind these organizations. And these are, in a way, reflected by the capital power or token holders uh, that ultimately give the verdict there. And we also have a question of, we mean like refi, but what, what kind of metrics 
that we want to use to define a regenerative finance projects, how do you want to evaluate them? And this kind of, in a way, again, refers back to the ESG framework that is often critiqued for it not actually counting the things that matters or it being like super open to greenwashing by corporations. Um, and if you want to build an alternative system, we, of course, want to be able to uh, collectively establish a standard that we have the powers to apply uh, for what counts as a regenerative and how we want to qualify projects. And um, there will also be conflicts that kind of I personally faced while working with different protocols in their mechanism designs, where you have to kind of make this decision around um, what kind of uh, impact and how impact you want to create towards how the protocol works. And this might sometimes create kind of the needs of the protocol and needs of profit versus the needs of nature or uh, more like needs of uh, ecological impact. And how are these um, semi-conflicts uh, navigated? What are the powers of influence that impact uh, how these decisions are made? Are inevitably related to the power relations and power balances that make up a network. Um, and then this is why decoupling is uh, super important because we want to, if we want to, co as a community, incubate a network, we also want to have the powers to decide these fundamental uh, aspects of, uh, that, of what makes our network what it is. Um, and this is enabled through um, what I call ecosystemic value, um, and we can define it as a value inherent in the permutation space of an interconnected ecosystem. It is, in a way, um, the occult power of, a, of the collective soul of a network that cannot be acted upon, that cannot be tapped by a single agent in the system, but requires cooperation and collaboration of multiple entities to work together to unleash this value. Um, and here in this diagram, you can see that uh, as more kind of DAOs uh, belong to an ecosystem, the possibility of interactions and the outcomes also increases. But these interaction lines can be tapped into only through actually realizing these interactions. And um, in more practical terms, it allows us to increase the total resource capacity of an ecosystem and, in a way, create, help in creating um, resources and uh, needs that would otherwise need to be sourced from external resources endogenously. And uh, this allows us to create a more uh, resilient and, in the end, a sovereign ecosystem that we want. Um, to give a couple examples of how it actually works in DAO to DAO interactions, we can imagine an endogenous DAO incubation process where um, DAOs, as part of their treasury management strategies, can allocate a certain percentage of funding to a common fund that invests as a collective in new projects, so that now the projects can do DAO raise rather than needing to talk to other actors, right? And these, in being able to raise from DAOs, they can be much more free in aligning goals and missions. Um, and then they can also partner with other DAOs to create collective liquidity pools that allows them to access to critical liquidity for their tokens to survive. And rather than each DAO spending individually to source liquidity, they can uh, use uh, protocols like Balancer and Symmetric to um, have one reserve asset that all of them can be connected to and uh, you create a kind of a shared pool to reduce the cost of acquiring the needed liquidity. And then we have kind of more broader dot to dot collaborations that allows them to kind of create adoption and uh, usage and experimentation of their protocol through um, partnering with these DAOs that provide them access to their communities or provide the experimentation space um, within their organization. 
And also integrations are about kind of uh, when you build a protocol, um, we know that it's going to be interoperable, but four or five DAOs might be building a protocol that are targeting similar purposes, which we see especially in um, after Vitalik Buterin's article, Solban Tokens, we see kind of proliferation of projects focused on building uh, NFT-based, non-transferable NFT-based uh, contributor journeys, uh, DAO ma treasury management strategies, etc. But we can already see that DAOs will not be using five, six NFTs at the same time, even though every protocol um, is targeting a different aspect of how those NFTs can be used. So, for example, one of the communications that we are trying to do with this project is to establish a common standard where all the tools that they built can be used as extra add-on modules that can tie into a general framework so that um, both every project have a space to uh, tap into this value and uh, basically build on top of the ad standard adaption that organizations can adopt. And also we have kind of this treasure diversification aspect, which, you know, it's, there's still arguments about how correlated the crypto markets are. However, there's still a case for treasure diversification where um, DAOs, in a way, exchange tokens with each other and have exposure to each other's success, such that there are, there's an increased chance of surviving in a bear market when your project is down horrendously but let's say you did 20 token swaps with uh, different DAOs across different parts of the ecosystem, and there are chances that uh, some of the tokens there um, are up in value or they, they have depreciated less, which kind of allows you to have more resources uh, to fund development in uh, dire times and in a way increases your chance to survive. And of course, these rituals that kind of embed organizations into a conscious of a we, of a collective, um, enables the emergence of what is dubbed uh, ownership networks, where we see kind of through token swaps that structurally embed exposure to each organization's success, we see more willingness to um, work on these relations, work on cooperating, um, we see more reasons for enabling the emergence of joint ventures where kind of um, because DAOs know that their success is tied to each other in a way, they are more kind of keen on um, working together. And this is kind of a strategy that we at PrimeDAO have used um, a lot where before all, any of our cooperation with another DAO, we make a token swap and it's like, from tribal perspective, you can see it as a you know, blood pact, where it's like a symbolic act of being one together. But of course, it's also structural in that now we have exposure to each other's success. And one of the defining features of crypto networks is uh, creating these uh, embedded incentive structures that uh, incentivize the behaviors you want to see. And as I mentioned, the treasure, treasure diversification aspect DAOs can become more anti-fragile uh, by increasing their chance of survival, survival and in a derivative way, increasing the resilience of the network. Um, and of course, through these rituals of cooperation and collaboration, uh, we kind of turn the ecosystem itself into a more positive sum game because um, you know, when we look at it from abstract, in an abstract way, what defines the ecosystem as more permanent aspects are the people that are active in that ecosystem and the code that they build, which are more eternal than organizations that are, uh, at that moment, created to kind of mobilize people towards the creation of these uh, protocols. Um, and uh, so this is something that we are experimenting uh, in Celo network as well. Uh, so Celo blockchain is um, arguably claims, to, uh, has the biggest claim to become a, a, net, a blockchain for refi projects. 
because of its uh, focus on developing stack for third world uh, countries and also its um, actions towards creating a blockchain native stable coin that kind of is backed by natural assets. Um, and there's an organic emergence of already, like there's an organic magnet of refi projects um, thinking about Celo, and we wanted to use this momentum and um, what Celo offers to partner with key actors in that network to create this um, collective nourishing of DAOs uh, of refi projects that we want to see there. And he, this table is basically kind of um, list the, the DAO toolings that Prime DAO has built and is building. So these uh, Prime deals, Prime rating, and Prime launch are already live. Prime pools is um, going live in a couple of weeks. But it lists kind of through protocols what we enable uh, for DAOs to interact with each other in a crypto native way and how these are kind of boosted by specific partnerships that allows us to join forces and uh, reduce operational costs for each other, uh, reduce the kind of coordination costs through enabling of these uh, crypto native protocols and in a way create programs, create systems of cultivating refi projects that none of us could have done individually. And once we are able to kind of um, use our power together, now we can create our own um, project nourishing uh, stream, right? Which means, for example, in Prime Launch, we have this seed module and liquidity bootstrapping um, protocol that allows us to kind of launch DAO tokens. But we can use this to kind of create signaling mechanisms that match um, multiple grants or investment programs into one stream uh, allow us to plug our own community into investing so that we uh, source the initial uh, seed, seed money for projects internally, endogenously. And then we have Prime Rating, which operates as a decentralized uh, agency, a rating agency that creates uh, rating frameworks and creates a decentralized community that rates these protocols. So by distributing ownership of these to different DAOs, now we can collaboratively create um, how we want to understand regenerative finance projects and what kind of rating framework you want to implement, right? And then use this rating framework to make decisions in these um, different products. So we can use this rating framework to judge how, well, what's the impact that we expect from this protocol and whether that impact unlocks even more funding that we want to support them with in the launch phase. Um, Prime Deals is a negotiation interface and protocol for DAO to DAO interactions. Right now we are supporting uh, token swaps and we want to use this to kind of seed um, partnerships and intensify the connections between these partners. Uh, we have done already multiple token swaps and um, it's in a way kind of is our biggest tool for diversifying our treasury and uh, establishing this co-ownership network. And uh, Prime Pools will be a liquidity solution for DAOs to aggregate their voting power together and um, basically have voting influence over core liquidity, uh, core decentralized exchanges that direct liquidity emissions. So by, uh, by uniting our forces together, you know, we will have a, we will be a block that can direct these emissions that we can support for specific purposes, right? When we launch a project, for example, for a certain duration of time, we can uh, direct a certain percentage of liquidity towards these newly launched projects that allows us to kind of incubate and bootstrap them in an easier way. Um, before they will need to go to another market maker or they would need to give um, less fav more favorable terms to their investors. But because we can source this internally, that emerges out of our cooperation, we can actually um, bring in more ecosystemic value there. Um, and of course, in infrastructure, the way we, okay, I'm realizing I'm out of time. This is the conclusion. Um, 
as an, once we kind of build these infrastructure protocols, uh, we can realize that this permutation space that is pot possible by the interaction of these DAOs can be realized as an action on the blockchain through the protocols that facilitate them, right? When you think about the peer-to-peer -peer economy, before you could only send money to each other, but the emergence of protocols allowed you to engage in very complex financial relations with other agents in the system uh, in a crypto-native way. And we want to see the same for uh, DAO-to-DAO DAO interactions, and we know that we need to build infrastructure work uh, coupled with cultural work to enable this, and this is kind of what we are trying to do. Um, and this QR code is actually for anyone interested in uh, joining our kind of refi incubation program that we are going to kickstart soon. Um, but yeah, um, that's it. Thank you.